Hi guys, and welcome to today's video. So, I know I haven't posted in a while, but I'm back, and I should post more regularly. Should. I probably will. So now that like I'm totally like, settled into the school year, and I'm back home, I was at my mom's house all summer, but I'm back at my dad's, so change of scenery, I guess. Um, I should be posting more, and let's just get straight into this. So, the last time I posted was the day that 1989 Taylor Vision was announced, which was August 9th. Well, I posted on August 10th. And today is October 23rd, so 1989 Taylor's version is literally coming out on Friday. You don't know how hyped I am. Like, I am beyond hyped. Like, I'm, like, actually so excited. Like, I need to stop saying, like, it's crazy that it's already been two months. Like, no way it's been two months since 1989 Taylor's version was announced. But all that being said, it's time for predictions and Easter eggs and everything that we know about 1989 so far. So you might not need this, but if you're a new Swifty, let's get some background knowledge on 1989. So 1989 is Taylor Swift's fifth studio album, came out on October 27th, 2014, and it was her first official pop album. So this album had a lot of hype build up because she had already been like transitioning into pop at the time, but this was her full like pop. So, 1989, the concept was, came out after Grammy night when she didn't win for Red. And she was devastated. And that's when she realized she needed a rebirth and she just needed to make Album of the Year. That's what she wanted and that's what she drove for. And that's what she got. She got Album of the Year. And it was super good. Um, the 1989 era, the original 1989 era wasn't the best era. She was not doing the best at the time, to say the least. But... This, that's why in this era, she's trying to make everything so happy and so but things have changed. And she's happy with herself is basically what she's trying to like put out. She changed the whole vibe. 1989 used to be a very city album, like Welcome to New York. It was a very, like when you go to the city, that's what you think, you would think 1989. But she transitioned to the 1989 Taylor's version era into more of a beach aesthetic. And maybe that's just because she's trying to represent that she's more free instead of like isolated but it's definitely changed the vibe of the album. So there's five all tracks in 1989 Taylor's version, which is the least she's ever done, which is a little crazy because there was rumored to be like 150 vault songs for this. And she only decided to put out five with the sixth being like the sixth target exclusive song already being released. It was just sweeter than fiction Taylor's version. If you didn't know. The five all tracks that are we getting are Slut, Say Don't Go, Now That We Don't Talk, Suburban Legends, and Is It Over Now. And I am beyond excited to hear these. I think these might be her best vault tracks. I don't know. I don't know if it can beat the Red Vault, because the Red Vault is so good. I love the Red Vault, because Red's my favorite, of course. So I'm going to let you know my opinion on each vault track, and feel free to let me know in the comments what your predictions are. So track 17, Slut, was revealed a little bit differently than the other four vault tracks so this one is she actually used the vault so i'll put a picture right here but she used like the actual like vault to tell us like the letters and then we didn't officially know what the track was called um swifties were like in debate whether it was going to be slut or lust and i personally i thought it was going to be lust because i was like she would never put out a song called slut but crazy enough, she did, and we'll be able to hear it in four days. I'm so excited. We didn't officially know what this um, track was going to be called until she put out the back covers, which she did. And my opinion on the back covers is very iffy. Like, I like them. I'm, I like them a lot more than when I originally saw them, but I think that's a lot. Like, that happens with a lot of Taylor's work. So I think Slut is either going to be, like, a total ballad, or it's going to be, like, a total upbeat pop song, like like blank space or style like it's gonna be totally like there like or like i wish you would like those type of vibes it's gonna be a very up tight upbeat song but it's also gonna have a lot like a deeper meaning and if you don't know the background of slut um it's basically most likely gonna be about how she was considered a serial dater back in her early 20s and she would always get criticized on how she was going through men like crazy like she was just like tossing them aside which she absolutely wasn't she was just a girl in her 20s just trying to find herself which i don't know why she got so much hate for it and like some of this song is kind of probably gonna be like kind of like the man how like 
Um, if she was a man, she wouldn't get shamed for some of the stuff she got shamed for because she's a woman. Um, but yeah, it's definitely going to be like a different... It's definitely going to be one of her more deeper meaning songs, kind of like Antihero. That song was very, like, to the heart. And I think this one will be too. Track 18. Say Don't Go. So I feel like Say Don't Go is definitely going to be like a, maybe like an all you have to do is stay type song. It's going to be like, like, Say Don't Go. So like, it's going to be like about how, I think that the vault tracks are going to be in like, kind of like a storyline. So like, she gets called a slut. And then, and then the next song is she gets like, it's going to be like the guy like walking out and she's like wishing or like she's walking out of the relationship and she's hoping that he'll be like say she's hoping that he'll say don't go but then later on you'll see that and now that we don't talk i guess she did leave and he didn't say anything and then they don't talk anymore and then suburban legends i feel like it might be like looking back on the relationship sort of kind of and then finally is it over now is they haven't talked for in a little while and they've moved on but anyway Back to Say Don't Go. So I feel like Say Don't Go is definitely gonna be more of like a, like a, a more easy song. It's one, the longest song, I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on this. But I'm pretty sure this is the longest song on the vault, tr uh, like out of the five vault tracks. And usually longer songs tend to be more like poetic. Her longer songs are usually more lyric driven than her more upbeat pop songs, which are more like shorter because shorter pop songs tend to do better than longer pop songs. Since this one is Longer, I think it's gonna be more like, like you're in love, like type, like not obviously like that because it's a different situation, but more like calm and the more like lovely pop song, if that makes sense. And I just feel like this one might not be like the top one on the album, but like I feel like all of these vault tracks are definitely gonna be like chart toppers. Like this album, I feel like it's gonna be one of, if not the best we record. And I'm very excited to hear it. Like you don't even know. Track 19. Now that we don't talk. I think this one, kind of like the last one, like, but this one is more shorter. It's not the shortest. Um, I did get that wrong. I said it was not the shortest, but it, um, it is the shortest of all track. In fact, it is Taylor Swift's shortest song. This one, I feel like is going to be more like, I don't really know how to explain it. I think this one might be, other than Slut, which I think everyone is going to be like claiming, Now that we don't talk is the one that I'm claiming. I think this might be like hands down like the best song on the album. It's probably gonna be very lyric driven, but also like upbeat and a pop song that everyone wants to hear. Um, but I don't think it's gonna be like, I don't think it's gonna be anything that she hasn't done already, if that makes sense. Am I hoping that this is like totally extraordinary? Yes, but do I think this is gonna be my favorite song? No, I don't think that any of the 1989 Vault songs are gonna make it to like the top of my favorite songs, but I, don't know what's going on yet. I feel like I have no idea. And I'm so excited to look back on these songs and like at this prediction and see how like totally right I am or totally wrong. But I'm very excited. And I still can't believe it's only four days away. Like in three nights, I'll be able to hear this song. Like, are you kidding me? Track 20. Suburban Legends. Suburban Legends sounds like it's definitely gonna be a good song, but I think this might be my least favorite from the vault. This sounds like it could either go in the total right way and it could be like the lead single like it could be like the best song on the album or it could be like total crap like i feel like it could go either way like i feel like this title is very iffy for me the i feel like the other three like say don't go now that we don't talk and is it over now are totally connected kind of like how i feel like when i think of like the fearless ball i think if we were happy that's when don't you like they kind of like they're not all about the same thing, but like I think of those three songs together. Like I feel like Suburban Legends just doesn't match the vibe of the rest of the vault tracks. But I think this could either be like a banger and totally amazing, or this could be like, uh, what were we thinking? Or like, maybe it should have stayed in the vault. I don't know. But I'm hoping that it's gonna be really good. I'm just, a little worried for this one. This is the only one I'm actually like kind of concerned about. But the as of like, I think it might fit the vibe of the album. Like this, Suburban Legends definitely. 
sounds like a very 1989 coded song. Like, I feel like I can't hear that title on like any other album except for maybe Reputation. And finally, track 21. Is it over now? Is It Over Now is the perfect closer. Like, I think this is the perfect closing song that she's ever done. Like, other than Bye Bye Baby, like, with these re-recordings, she's, like, picking, like, the best closers. Like, I feel like these closers, like, these closing songs are just, like, so good. Like, they just make sense. Like, ever since, like, Midnight's, she's been picking, like, like, or not Midnight, since, like, Fearless Taylor's version. Like, Bye Bye Baby, All Too Well 10 Minute. And then it was Mastermind, but then it was also Dear Reader, which are both really good ending songs. I feel like they're very strong endings. And then Timeless, and now Is It Over Now? Those like, are all like such like last track names. Like, like I feel like she knew exactly what she was doing. Like she needed to put this song out just so it could be like the last track. This song is definitely probably gonna be the middle tier. I'm gonna rank them all at the end. Um, but like, I'm, I could be totally wrong on this album about this album, but I think this is also gonna be a very, like, pop song, also kinda like, like, um, All You To Do Is Stay, just like, like, I don't know, if I could have a whole album based on All You To Do Is Stay, and I Wish You Would, and Wildest Dreams, like, those three songs, perfect album. I think this is definitely gonna, it, it definitely has potential by the name. Like, I feel like if a song has, like, a bad name, it, like, it's kinda iffy. The 1989 Vault Track songs like already like sound superior like they already sound like amazing chart stoppers just like she said she said that this is her favorite re-record so far and that probably means a lot coming from you know a huge artist like that this is her favorite and i feel like you can definitely tell because i feel like this album has definitely had like a lot more promotion taylor seems to like this one more it's definitely more promoted it's definitely more um put out there than speak now was like she's definitely paying attention to this more and like, yes, she's in her era's era, but she's also very much in her 1989 era. Here is my final ranking of the Vault Tracks. Each um, re-record, other than um, Fearless, but Fearless was kind of different. It's a, that's a different story. The re-record so, so far, Red and uh, Speak Now have had a music video. Fearless kind of had one, but I don't know. So Fearless had, what was it? Was it The Best Day? Was that the music video that we got? And then we had I Bet You Think About Me, and All Too Well, the short film. And then we had the I Can See You music video, which I think the I Can See You music video was definitely more um, Easter egg driven than anything else. But 1989, I feel like this could be like, this could have one, I feel like it could potentially have one or two music videos. I feel like she could do like, like Suburban Legend sounds like it would be a music video song. Slut, eh. But I, I think Suburban Legends is like, is gonna be the music video song. It just sounds like it's gonna be so much. And the music video, I can't tell when it's gonna come out. I can't tell if she's gonna drop it or if she's gonna wait until she goes back on tour. But I'm so excited for that because, you know, the music videos are always very exciting. And like, I never usually catch like the Easter eggs, but like, I like look up a, like I see on TikTok like the next day, all the Easter eggs. And like on YouTube, I always like to watch to find like the Easter eggs and it always gets me so excited for like, what's next? Like I feel like Taylor Swift, there's like, it's like never ending, it's never resting. Like something's always happening and something, if something's not happening, then something's up. So something is happening when something's not happening. Okay, something that we know are like the vinyl variants, which five, they are so good. They are so good. I, I know I talked about this before um, I went away for the two months, before I like, since, you know, when I made like the prediction video and like at what we know so far. And excuse me, these covers and the variants and everything about this album, this is my favorite like re-record like process so far. Like everything, like these vinyl variants are the prettiest things I've ever seen, but they better be like solid colors. Like I don't think that they're gonna be um, transparent, but if they are, I'm gonna be a little disappointed because yeah, I ordered so far the blue one, the Crystal Skies Blue Vinyl and Sunrise Boulevard Vinyl. And then also on release day, which I'll vlog release day because I'm so excited, I'm also going to get Tangerine Vinyl, which is going to be so good. And then um, I ordered two CDs. I ordered the two deluxe. I ordered uh, Rose Garden Pink and Aquamarine Green, the Polaroids. And I'm so excited to be able to get those. And they're, they're literally coming this week. That's so exciting. That's so crazy to think about. 
Um, but Swifties were going crazy. Like, some Swifties were so mad because she, like, released them one by one. And then shipping every single time. Shipping was so expensive. Like, if you didn't buy merch, you wouldn't know. But, like, the shipping was, like, per vinyl, like, 8 or $9 plus tax. It was so bad. And then with the CDs, I think they were, like, $6 plus tax. So it wasn't as bad, but it was still, like, awful. Like, you would not want to pay that. And then when she brought them all back, people were like, what the heck? I just paid all that shipping. So then they had to cancel their order and then buy all new ones. Crazy. Okay. Let's also talk about how there's not only been leaks for some of these songs, but also she's been, like, releasing, like, little snippets, like, throughout. So, of course, we've already had uh, Wild Streams Taylor's version and then This Love's Taylor's version for two years now. But then we also have um, little snippets that come out. So, welcome to New York. Welcome to New York was played at the NFL, like, for the game. So, like, it was, like, a, I guess in, like, a trailer. I don't know. I'm not really a big football person. But it was played in a trailer, and it was a little snippet. And people couldn't tell if it was 1989 or Welcome to New York Taylor's version or a stolen version. But Taylor Swift wouldn't get permission if it was, like, the stolen version. Blank Space. Blank Space was interesting. Because Blank Space was accidentally, like, leaked on Instagram. Like, Taylor Swift's team, like, put it out. And, like, 200-something thousand um, views it had on Instagram Reels and, like, videos posted. It was crazy. Out of the woods. <laughs> Out of the woods. Ooh. That was put in a trailer. So if you went to go see the Aristore movie um, on like the first night you would hear out of the woods Taylor's version playing in one of the previews and it was also on TikTok too that's how I saw it because I actually haven't seen the movie yet I'm going on the 26th I'm so excited um I might vlog that too I don't know yet out of the woods and it sounds so much different but it sounds so much better different like sometimes I don't agree when people are like oh my gosh it sounds so much better re-recorded and I'm just like like speaking out Taylor's version is definitely my least favorite re-record so far it just sounded too different but now that she's in her pop era, everything's going to sound... Now that like, she's working with her pop albums, it's going to sound more clear. And it's going to be... It's the same type of vibe. So it's going to sound the same, but it's going to sound older. So it's going to sound more mature and produced. And it's she's gotten better over time. So the album can only get better. Yeah. Overall, she's done so much like over like the past course of the month. Like entering this era. Ever since the era's tour ended, the eras did not. Like, it is crazy. If you guys like this type of content, please let me know down in the comments below. Let me know your predictions for the upcoming 1989 Taylor's version album because it's literally only a few days away. And yeah, I'll also be reacting to 1989 Taylor's version on release day, hopefully, if I remember and I wake up early enough. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to wake up early and I'm gonna, um, like, listen to it before I get ready for school. Cause I, I can't stay up till midnight. Mm -mm. It's not gonna work. I'm gonna fall asleep and not be able to make it to school. And also, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, follow my socials and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.